Greetings! My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome back to Crimson Grey. Most likely, the last episode. I'm not really sure where it could go from here, but, well, I've been surprised before. Which would actually make this the second finale in a row. Hmm, funny that. So yeah, last time, we managed to- oh, we, we got captured by her, locked up in her basement, as you do. But, we were able to... Yeah, we, we were able to get get out of our bonds and convince her that we weren't... That her insecurities that led to the whole ca uh, locking me up in the basement were unfounded. And that... Uh, there was a very touching scene as she realized, you know, how she could very, uh, how she very nearly destroyed the relationship and all that. So yeah, we moved. Uh, now we've moved past that into a better, more healthy relationship, hopefully. In the morning, John felt surprisingly refreshed. He made sure to take the meds that Lizzie had sent with him, since they seemed to have worked well so far. When he went to school, he would have to ask Mrs. Smythe her opinion, because despite the absurdity of it all, they were still going to have to go to school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of when I realized, oh no, I've, I've been kidnapped and I still need to do my homework. What a gyp. Lizzie wasn't waiting for him outside his house, which was probably a good thing, he decided. The walk to the school, uh, the walk to school in the crisp air gave him time to focus. Not that he reached any profound conclusions, but by the time he reached school, he at least felt reasonably okay. He didn't spot Lizzie at all, but when he opened his locker, he discovered a folded note in the center. I don't feel like murdering anyone today! <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by hearts. Oh, isn't that just like her? Despite himself, John laughed. At least he thought she meant it as a joke. When he looked up, he saw Lizzie around a nearby corner, and she smiled at him before vanishing. Yeah, I imagine it's... Uh, I don't know if it's a joke, and that makes it even funnier. He drifted through several classes. Today, he wasn't too different from the other students, since they were all back from vacation and unfocused. None of the teachers tried to make them do very much. After school, he headed, to, he headed to Mrs. Smythe's office, not entirely sure what he was going to say. After so long away, however, he definitely felt like he could use some counseling. And maybe don't mention what you did while you were away. <laughs> She clearly has no respect for, uh, doctor-patient confidentiality. <laughs> ah, John, I hope you had a good vacation. It was okay. <laughs> Exciting, certainly. You? But the whole time working, I'm afraid. I actually tried to call you, but it seems you weren't at home. Yeah, I was busy. Sorry. <laughs> busy is one word for it. Although when you say it like that, she might think that you were <laughs> off w in your girlfriend's house uh, making love- uh, making sweet, sweet love. Which we could have done if we were for fucking YouTube! Anyways. Oh, it's fine. I just hope you haven't lost any of our progress. Why don't you lie down and we can get started right away? He got onto the couch, but things didn't go as smoothly as usual. Mrs. Smythe was doing her best, but he just couldn't concentrate. It didn't take a genius to know the reason. He needed to decide exactly what he was going to do. If you wanted protection from the police, this would probably be his best chance to ask for it secretly. <laughs> what do we have to... What are you talking about? What do we have to be protected from? <laughs> or even if he skipped some details, Mrs. Smythe might be able to provide some help of some kind. Or maybe he shouldn't tell her anything. Yeah, that. It had all worked out for the best, hadn't it? Quite so. Something on your mind, John? 
Let's see. In your way for Lizzie, tell the truth. Ask for more Paxatine. Why would we want to do that? Lie about everything. Yes. Exactly. People tell you that honesty is the best policy. Those people are being dishonest with you. Says it all, really. I don't know. This vacation was weird. I felt okay. Not great, but okay. <coughs> now, were you able to take a trip with your family? A change of scenery might have done you some good. <laughs> <coughs> yes. A change of scenery is one way to put it. Nah, we didn't do anything. But I guess a few things have changed for me lately. Maybe you're right. Uh, maybe we should tell her that, uh, that that girl you like invited you over to her house if you catch my drift. <laughs> yeah, cut that part out. Apparently, Mrs. Smythe thought he was doing better because she ended the session early and let him go home. On his way out, he spotted Lizzie watching him from the shadows. He smiled at her and she smiled back, but that was all. And for now, that was enough. John started walking. The school year got away from him a little. Despite everything he'd been through, John found himself returning to something like a routine. His time with Lizzie was strange. At times, she was even sweeter and more devoted than before, but occasionally she showed flashes of something else. Once when a classmate happened to smile at him, Lizzie explained at length how she wanted to dismember the other girl limb, one limb at a time. John just held her and stroked her hair. Oh, that's lovely. It really is. Maybe he was going crazy, but he no longer minded those parts of her. He much preferred that Lizzie to the one who hided her true nature from him. Now that's a, an area where honesty is the best policy. He wasn't sure if it was his imagination, but he almost felt like there was a little more color in the sky than there had been before. On occasion, he still headed to the library to try to look more, uh, more about Koitek, see if he could find out more about Lizzie's condition. It wasn't going terribly well. All he had to go on was old microfilm and random ideas, which was part of why he brought Lizzie, but she seemed uninterested. Eventually, he sat back and pondered how to go forward. This isn't working. We need to come up with something else. When I was at, when I was at your house, you made some pretty strong statements about Koitek. Do you know anything about them? Nothing specific. I just have a strong feeling that you shouldn't get involved. Well, I think you were right about the Paxatine, so I'm happy to take you seriously. But I don't think I want to go full conspiracy theory yet. And even if it was true, what could we do? I mean, we're just a couple of kids. It's not like their secrets will be printed in the local paper. Maybe it's best that we don't worry about them. For now. For now, sure. But later, if there's any chance we could learn more, more about you. Not to try to change you, Lizzie. But you want to know, don't you? I don't care. But if you think it's important, then it's important to me too. But, yes. Maybe now isn't the best time. We're too young to deal with something like this. If any of this is true, I wonder if we'll ever be old enough for it. There's something I wanted to ask you. It's not so important, but it, it's soon, and it matters to me. Of course, go ahead, what is it? The county fair is coming up next month. Can, can we go? Together? Well, I've always thought it was a kind of a cheap event, but maybe it wouldn't be so bad with you. Yay, I'll look forward to it. It was only later that John remembered something some of his classmates had said. Elementary schoolers went to the, flare to the fair to play games, middle schoolers went for the roller coasters, and high schoolers went to get laid. <laughs> Was that what Lizzie had been meaning to imply? Had he just signed up for more than he had realized? I hope so. But over the next several days, she didn't act any differently, and just seemed to look forward to it with innocent anticipation, so it felt awkward to bring up. And the longer he didn't mention it, the stranger it got. And so, day by day, they eventually reached the date of the county fair. Lizzie met him at the edge of the fair, 
shifting from foot to foot eagerly. Her face lit up when she saw him, and she immediately hurried to meet him. Oh, you're finally here! This is going to be so much fun! I'm glad to spend time with you, but honestly I haven't gone to the fair in a few years. Oh, I'm sure we'll have fun. Besides, the most important thing is that people will see us together. What? Jay doesn't really count unless a guy is willing to go to the fair with you. Guys don't talk like that? Huh, <laughs> no. For most guys, it's more about getting laid. Well, I want to do that too. But let's go check out all the attractions first. <laughs> I'll be happy to check out your attractions. <laughs> uh. So nice to see them just... After all they've gone through, it's nice to see them just having a good time, you know? For a while, they just wandered, checking out all the attractions. Since the fair was still getting started up, it was easy to grab some food and cotton candy, which Lizzie happily fed in pieces of while they walked. Ha! <laughs> hand... Uh, progressing to hand feeding, huh? Kinky. Okay, very nice. Honestly, though, the idea of people thinking them as boyfriend and girlfriend felt wrong. Too trivial. He wasn't sure what word was appropriate for them, after everything they had been through, but he was certain he, that he was more committed to Lizzie than he'd ever been to anyone. Alright, Casanova, I think you're- I think going straight to marriage would be a bit <laughs> forward. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Boyfriend and girlfriend does feel a bit too cheap. I guess uh, even, even lovers feels a bit... Mm. And the way her eyes met his, not trying to hide the madness within, he felt very at peace with their relationship. It felt right, whatever it was. Yeah. Ooh, is that a knife throwing booth? <laughs> I suppose you want to try it. Of course I do! The man running the booth looked pretty sleazy, and John was fairly certain the game was rigged. There was a big guy in line in front of them, who only got a knife in one target and seemed pissed about it. Well, well, well. Want to impress your lady friend? Or we have some nice prizes if we can get a few knives in. Actually, she'll be throwing. Eh? Well, just be careful you don't cut yourself, little lady. These knives are shit. Look, we can't have people getting hurt. This is super... It doesn't matter. Lizzie proceeded to hit the, a target with every single knife. She didn't just throw them. Her arm lashed out like a snake, and the next second, the knife was deep in one of the targets. <laughs> the man running the booth just looked irritated that, the that his game was beaten, but he grudgingly showed them to the wall of prizes. Lizzie clapped her hands gleefully. Uh, she does look beautiful like this, doesn't she? Ooh, what should we get? You won, what do you want? I guess, how about the big titty teddy bear? On the top? I can take anything I want, right? Just take what you want and go. John took down the bear and handed it to her. He hugged it with a cute little squeal, then skipped away. John followed with an odd expression. The stuffed bear? Really? I like taking them apart. She cast a quick glance at him. Hesitant for a moment, but he smiled at her and she went on. As in, limb from limb. It helped me calm down before I found you. Well, maybe we better not do that in public. But if you want dismembered, but if you want dismemberment bears, we can get dismemberment bears. Uh, ah, how sweet. Took the words right out of my mouth. Seeing her win the game so effortlessly had him a bit curious though. When John spotted a high striker booth, he directed them toward it. He kind of marveled at the pole with the bell at the top. He'd seen them in pictures, but he hadn't been sure they actually existed anymore. Some classmates he barely recognized were trying their luck at the moment, swinging the hammer overhead and bringing it down out to the target as hard as they could. None of them got the slider more than halfway to the bell. Well, there's a bit of a tr What you want to actually do with those is you, wa you want to you want to jump and then uh, and then right and then right before you hit the ground, bring the hammer down. 
give you, uh, that way you get the most. Well, anyways. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah, let's. He gave the pad at the base of the pole his best swing. The slider went up about halfway, about like most of his peers. He was happy with that. He'd expected to do a lot worse. <laughs> but that re really didn't matter. Once he was done, John put in another quarter and then extended the hammer toward Lizzie. Careful not to break it. <laughs> Me? Yeah, don't hold back. Hit it as hard as you can. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. But she giggled and took the hammer from him all the same. When the, while the light stopped flashing, Lizzie held the hammer in one hand and got into position. When she actually struck, it was surprisingly fast. She raised the hammer, grasped it with both hands, and then somehow a second later she had already slammed it down. Hard. The slider shot upwards and struck the bell with a cracking sound before it fell back down. Oh <laughs> shit, did you actually break it? Oops, too hard. That's what I thought though. Wait, do I not get anything now? I think the lights just flash and tell you you're really strong. That's really disappointing. Yep. That's why I don't really bother with them. I mean, it's kinda shit, isn't it? She didn't seem disappointed though, smiling at him as they walked onward. So, you were curious about me? Just wondering how strong you actually are. I'm not sure to be honest, but it's always been that way. Even when I was, when I had just come out of the womb, I was able to, uh, able to suplex my mother. As soon as I went to kindergarten and met other kids, I realized that I had to slow down and pretend to be weak, or they would look at me too much. Well, that's pretty impressive. I like hammers. They're just very messy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Eyes are more fun to collect, and so practical. But what really feels best in my hand is an axe. I'm not sure why. Huh. An axe. Yeah, axes are pretty great. This might be another conversation better left for private. Hehe, <laughs> okay. They walked onward, just chatting and enjoying each other. And John almost forgot about the fact that he was carrying the giant stuffed bear. But he got a reminder when he heard an unpleasant snicker. Are you fucking serious? You two came, came here to play around with stuffed animals? One of his classmates was there with his girlfriend, pawing at her chest while she giggled and swatted at his hands. They both leered at John and Lizzie holding hands. I mean, what are you, 12? <laughs> Once, taunts might have bothered him, but now John didn't care. He didn't even have any desire to prove that his friend was wrong. When he thought about what he had with Lizzie, and felt her squeeze his hand, he just didn't care. Come on, let's ditch these losers. His classmate's girlfriend led them away, and John really didn't really care that either. When he gave Lizzie a smile though, she seemed a little irked. You can just ignore them, you know? Yeah, but that won't be satisfying. Come on, this way. She dragged him into a narrow alleyway between two stalls. A little ways down, there was a closed off space in between several of the temporary stalls. Surrounded on three sides, the sounds of the fair seemed softer. He became very aware of how alone they were as Lizzie slid off her jacket. You want to do something not childish at all? Yes, I think I do. I don't know how you can just ignore what they say like that, but I admire it. Me, I want to do something to prove them wrong. She pulled off his shirt and he smiled. Well, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Woo! We are! All systems go! Oh my! I'm going to skip past this for YouTube! Man, that, w that uh, scene was great. I sure would be... Uh, I sure would be upset if I had to, had to miss that because of YouTube censorship. Man, I pity the poor fools who, who don't get to see that. <laughs> don't you? <sighs> you have no idea how much I enjoyed that. We fit together so perfectly. It's like we were made for each other. He leaned back against the wall, needing a moment to catch his breath. That good, huh? <laughs> Quite so. Lizzie stood up and gave him a hug before putting her bra and shirt back on. Wow, that felt amazing. I 
right now. I want to do this and so much more. Maybe give me a break, though. Lily giggled mischievously and took his hand to pull him from the alley. Okay, but not too long. Soon they headed back out of the alley. John felt like everyone must have noticed, but no one even looked at them. Actually, things outside seemed different. He frowned and glanced at Lizzie, who paused for a moment, then nodded. Is something wrong? The sounds in the distance aren't normal. There's too much tension. Sexual tension. As soon as she said it, he realized that she was right. <coughs> it didn't sound like people talking and having fun. They were upset about something. They glanced at each other briefly, nodded, then headed toward the source of the commotion. Soon they arrived at a densely packed group of people, clustered around a line of police tape. You could see a few cops moving within it, and spinning lights lit the entire screen in strange colors, but he couldn't tell what had happened. Lizzie frowned, pondering something. She nodded her head toward the crowd, so he headed forward to learn more. He found a familiar face in the crowd and tapped her shoulder. Hey, what's going on? Oh god, it's horrible. Someone from our school was killed. Who? His face was... was... taken... off. Entirely. They're still trying to identify him. Oh shit, do they know who did it? They say it... I... I can't believe this. But they, but they said it was some girl from our school. She stabbed two of the police officers. Like, with a knife. They were rushed to the hospital. Oh, what about her? They sh shot, shot her. Seriously. At least that's what I heard. I just got her here in time to see the body before they covered up. But I didn't see the violent part. How horrible. Thanks for telling me, though. His classmate went back to staring at the crime scene. So he let himself drift back to Lizzie. Her eyes had grown serious. So he followed her as she put some distance between them and the crowd. Normally I would have guessed it was you, but... No, it wasn't. I would kill anyone who got between us. Anyone who wanted me to. But I wasn't involved with this. Do you have some idea though? There was... Another girl. Not like me, but... Similar. In our school? Really? Her mother knew Abby. They got kicked out of the Koi Tech program together. For... The same reason? Being pregnant? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. I never liked her. We never really spoke, but I think she could have been capable of this. Then, what do we do? I think we should go. Stay far away from this. I'm not arguing you with that. I'm not arguing with you there. She went with him to his door and, she, and he kissed her goodnight, but they both knew that things hadn't been entirely settled. Not yet. He tried to watch the news, but it was all meaningless speculation about what could have caused the girl to murder her boyfriend so brutally. He had to turn it off after only a few minutes. Though there were still more questions, when he went to bed, he finally slipped away from him, and he fell asleep remarkably quickly. That night, he had a dream that Lizzie had murdered both his classmates. He saw her standing over their torn open bodies. Covered in their blood. Look and looking gorgeous for it. That really is a good look on her, isn't it? She should wear more often. She saw him and bared her teeth in a smile, and then kissed him. And then. It wasn't a bad dream. <laughs> God, she is captivating, isn't she? And it seems that he very much agrees by this point, having wet dreams about her murdering people, covered in their viscera with a with a massive grin on her face and madness in her eyes. Get 
God, I wish that were me. Actually, for all you know, dear viewer, that is. I haven't told you very much about my wife, now have I? <laughs> and perhaps that's for good reason. The next morning, John woke feeling the best he'd felt in a long time. He had to remind himself that most people would be in mourning over the two murders the night before. The school had the flag at half-mast and a class was cancelled so they could have a special assembly about the incident. It meant basically nothing to him, and most of the other students as well. It seemed to have shaken everyone else to the core, but John still felt good. Maybe that meant something was wrong with him, but he didn't really care. That, that day, he and Lizzie were even closer together than before. When he saw her eyes light up whenever, he look, whenever she looked at him, he felt like he could really be together with her forever. After school, he got a call to go to Mrs. Smythe's office. He considered just not going at all. He wanted to spend the evening with Lizzie, but the note seemed urgent. Yes, being with Lizzie is all, is all the therapy he needs. She is his panacea. When he arrived, he found Mrs. Smythe with a rather grim expression on her face. John, I hope you're doing alright after the incident. I understand that the boy who died was a friend of yours. That felt like an eternity ago, but he realized that it was more or less true. He shook his head slowly. An old friend, but yeah, it's hard to believe. It is hard to believe that he was your friend. Well, I thought we should have a conversation. It's okay, it's okay, Mrs. Smythe. I feel like I'm doing okay. There are other students who probably need more help, need help more than I do. I'm afraid I must insist. Lie down. Hmm. You really are oddly obsessed with me, aren't you? Maybe you should be the one going to therapy. He almost defied her then, but in the end decided to do as she asked. Therapy sessions always made him feel better. It couldn't hurt. Yes, it could, but... Alright. No reason to draw attention to himself or Lizzie, after all. Alright, what do you want to talk... What, what do you want me to talk about? My feelings about the incident? No, there's no time for that today. Huh? I need you to relax. Immediately. Alright. Why are you in such a rush? Don began to settle back onto the couch, letting her words become a meaningless hum. And for the first time, he realized how wrong that was. That's good for- He lay there, apparently relaxed, as he tried to think about their past therapy sessions. The more he thought about them, the more he realized an ominous pattern. He could barely remember any details. They would chat for a while, then the rest of their session was just a white haze. I don't like to say that I told you so. Wait, yes I do! I told you so! I know it! I was saying this from the start! Ready? I need you to remain calm and come with me. Ready? I need you to remain calm and come with me. She spoke flatly, as if she expected to be a babe without question. What was this? Some sort of hypnosis? Well... Yes! Exactly! That's what, I, that's what I've been saying! So I'm gonna wear fucking hypnotherapy shit. I, I knew it! I knew it! I knew Mrs. Smythe was sketchy to start with! Realizing she might get upset, John slowly got to his feet. He wasn't sure how he was supposed to act, but he settled for straightforward obedience. Hmm. Delayed response. Have you been taking your pack team lately? He gave a half shrug and just stared back at her. Mrs. Smythe frowned, then shook her head and gestured for him to follow. I suppose it doesn't matter. All of this is normal. You want to follow me and await instructions. John had no choice but to do so as she left the building. But inside, he was panicking. What was he supposed to do now? If he'd seen Lizzie, he could have begged her to follow with his eyes. But he didn't see even a hint of her, not even watching him from around a corner. They walked outside into the parking lot, 
where Mrs. Smythe opened the passenger seat door of her car and gestured for him to get in. He stepped inside and tried to keep the tension off his face, instead just staying forward. No, 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 no. Don't go with her. Don't go with her to a secondary location. That's a terrible idea. Never go to a second location. Your odds or your odds of survival drastic go down. They didn't drive very far, just to a warehouse a few blocks from the school. It looked half abandoned, but when their car approached, the gates, and then one of the garage doors opened for her. Inside, there were multiple armed men in grey body armor. He didn't see any insignias on them, or any indication of who they worked for. Why don't you take a seat, John? He got out of the car to obey only then spotting the blank white table and two chairs placed in the center of the warehouse floor. Sitting down, he tried to stare blankly at the table, even as he analyzed what it held. There were two metal briefcases, and, just to make things strange, a stranger, a box of surgical gloves. Remain calm, but focus on me, John. You're aware of your surroundings, but willing to accept what I say. Huh? Not the most elegant of lies, but it seemed to work. Mrs. Smythe barely even glanced at him, instead putting, pulling on a, a pair of surgical gloves. We've brought you here for your own protection, John. I'm afraid that your girlfriend is not who you believe she is. You mean she isn't a psychotic yandere, per perfectly willing to murder people? <laughs> who... Uh, who <coughs> you, you mean she isn't a psychotic yandere who revels in, in bloodshed and is perfectly willing to kill people without any remorse? <laughs> Say it isn't so! Lizzie, what's the problem? Is she okay? I'm afraid not. Not even close. Years ago, Koitech was an innovative company on the very forefront of biochemical research, but I'm afraid some of the company's founders were less than ethical. What does that have to do with, any with us? Shut up, I'm getting there. Testing standards were rather lax. In particular, there was a certain test of a mood drug that should probably have never been certified. Dozens of lawsuits were settled for families that suffered in the test. That is right and good. Koitech acknowledges the mistakes of the past. Unfortunately, some of those mistakes were more enduring. Four pregnant women participated in tests without dis disclosing their pregnancies. They were, of course, removed as soon as their condition was realized, but it was too late for the embryos. One became completely non-viable and was stillborn. There's conflicting evidence around the second, but it appears the boy may have committed suicide at a young age, but we are concerned with the last two. One of them was the murderer who police put down last night. And the last was Lizzie Doss. Huh? You're... you're saying Lizzie has some kind of condition? Early investigations suggested both girls turned out normal, so the matter was closed. But recent events make it seem very likely that both of them were deeply disturbed. I'll be blunt. The girl is not remotely stable. She's a danger to herself and others. Did they, did they really think that would work? That he would just nod and accept that story with guards all around them armed like paramilitary forces? Then again, perhaps she was counting on her therapy to have a controlling effect. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like VINDICATION! I called all of this from the start. Well, more or less, all of this. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Ah, uh, not. Ah, uh, you know, if it weren't for you know the risk, the immediate threat of dying horribly, I'd be feeling pretty good right about now. <laughs> Either way, all I could do was keep up his act. There was no doubt truth in what she was saying, and he needed to learn more. And hold out, hopefully, for Lizzie to rescue us. <laughs> it's not a bit ironic. The girl who trapped us in her basement would be our only hope for rescuing us from being kidnapped by someone else. Yeah, only only she's allowed to kidnap us. Then, what do you want me to do? Why can't all your guards take care of it? John, 
We don't want to hurt the girl. <coughs> Bullshit. <coughs> Not at all. We want to help her. We prefer she came in quietly. You just don't want to make a scene. Or maybe you're afraid of her. I've seen what she can do. She's got some impressive power. She's got some impressive skills, doesn't she? Enough to make me suspect that maybe that it wasn't just a mood drug that you were testing. Maybe it was. Who knows? Maybe this, her incredible strength is just due to hormonal things. Could be. The implicit threat hung in the air. John swallowed and nodded. It hung, it hung in the air just as much as she'll soon hang in the air when Lizzie catches up to her. Then what am I supposed to do? The girl trusts you. If you can administer a sedative to her, then we hope we can medicate her without any unnecessary struggling. Mrs. Smythe opened the first metal case, showing him a number of syringes filled with disturbingly bright liquid. They look like chemicals that would melt metal, not like not the ones that should go into anyone's body. <clears throat> if you are receptive to our plan, we will provide you with a variety of options. We have extra strength sedatives here, for example. However, based on the incident yesterday, I personally believe we may need a more extreme option. I would advise you to use this one. Her fingers brushed the last syringe in the briefcase, one filled with a bright red liquid. Oh, that seems very above board. This is a modified version of the chemical that Lizzie was exposed to in utero. Oh, that can't possibly have any unpleasant effects. Uh, wouldn't that be really dangerous? Oh, that's a lovely expression. Her body can barely handle the level of exposure she already received. An additional dose should lock her down entirely. And you expect me to convince her to be injected with something like that? It does not need to be injected intravenously. An autopsy of the other girl in indicates that the chemical has a substantial effect on, on muscle tissue, so an injection into any muscle will be effective. Autopsy. This is more of a uh, conspiracy than he'd imagined. But there is no time to reel from that now. John simply nodded as if this was vaguely reasonable. Well, I wanted to get the help she needs. Are you sure this won't hurt her? Let me be honest with you, John. There will likely be some pain for her as her body rejects the chemical. But it may be the only way to ensure she harms no one and cooperates with treatment. I see. Yeah, treatment. I'm sure. I'm sure you won't just kill her and and dump her body somewhere to bury the evidence of your shitty actions. He sat forward and held his head in her hands as if he needed to think, which he desperately did need to do. You know. <coughs> I bet you don't really care about her causing a fuss, you just don't want it being traced back to you. In fact, perhaps you... Perhaps you didn't. Uh, perhaps you were lying about her being, uh, being seen as, you know, perfectly normal. Maybe you. Maybe, maybe, you just are going for her, not because she discovered that she's unstable, but simply because the other one, knew, uh, uh, the other, the other one, you know, causing that whole scene was being. In at risk of being traced back to you, and you wanted to cover your asses to, so, to ensure that it wouldn't happen again. I, I don't know. Would they really, really just give him the syringes and let him go? He doubted it. At the very least, they'd be keeping him under heavy surveillance. Talking directly to Lizzie would be impossible. Hmm. Maybe you should take the syringes and try and get Mrs. Smythe alone, and then use them on her. In fact... In fact, if... If Lizzie can distract the guards, maybe you could use them to take them out. Hmm. There's certainly options here. In fact, he had to wonder if everything Mrs. Smythe was saying wasn't just a backup plan. It might be no accident that Lizzie was missing. Maybe they were looking for her. 
but ultimately he didn't have enough information. And he didn't see any way of getting to the point he needed to reach with so many security forces present. Smythe? H uh, HQ hasn't responded. Damn it. We'll, have to, we'll just proceed with the plan then. No, it's not that. We seem to have lost our connection. Oh. <laughs> uh, th uh, methinks that a Livy is closer than you think. Then this case is completely under my authority. John, we're counting on you to end this without anyone else getting hurt. Anyone else, you say? Anyone other than Lily? <laughs> what a joke. I, I hope I can do that. You can, I'm sure of it. Actually, I... Then, should I... He wasn't sure exactly what approach he was going to take, but then abruptly it didn't matter. Lizzie was in the warehouse, and she winked at him. <laughs> Unlike you, I do, I hope that I can end this without, uh, with a very, uh, unlike you, I really do hope that, that this ends with quite a lot of people getting hurt. <laughs> Mayhaps my dream will come true after all. A second later, one of the soldiers fell with a gurgling cry. Everyone's eyes were drawn to him, and the knife in his eye. Except for John, who looked in the other direction. Sliding up behind another of the soldiers, Lizzie drew her axe across his throat. <laughs> that, is a, that is a really nice looking axe. I wonder where she got it. Damn it! Take her down! We need her alive! Why do you need her alive? That's odd. Unfortunately for the soldiers, Lizzie was under no such restrictions. She was enormously outnumbered, but she swept through the group, axe flashing brutally. They began using rubber bullets on her, and though some hit each other, a few managed to strike her. Lizzie slowed, faltered, and eventually they tackled her to the ground. John! Damn it. That didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> Shit. I was hoping she was gonna be like picking them off one by one just from the shadows. Oh well. She said his name only once while they wrestled her into the chair beside him, but it broke his heart. He wished he could do something, but he was helpless against trained soldiers. They had been cleverly concealed, but John realized that the chair that had sturdy straps designed to bind someone completely in place as they pinned Lizzie to her chair. He realized they were coming for him the next second and panicked, raising his hands. No, please, I'll cooperate, please, don't hurt me. He's harmless. Stay there and shut up, John. <laughs> you'll, reg you'll regret that impression. No, uh, no one is really harmless. Mrs. Smythe walked to the stand, uh, walked to stand in front of Lizzie, staring down at her like she was a repulsive insect. If I had my way, we'd have exterminated you already. But the board is apparently interested in what we might learn from you. Given your performance just now, it seems they were right. Ah. What are they planning on? On. Um, Figuring out the source of her strengths and, cr and training some sort of super soldiers or something. Not a bad idea, really. <laughs> what are you going to do, her, uh, do to her? Is this some kind of super soldier program? To his surprise, Mrs. Smythe laughed. Loudly and apparently authentically. <laughs> Don't be absurd, boy. Even if such a thing weren't ri wasn't ridiculous, do you have any idea how destabilizing it would be? As she spoke. She put on a new pair of surgical gloves and opened the second metal case, filled with clear syringes. Yeah, but sure, but isn't <laughs> isn't one of the like principles of un entrepreneurship destabilizing an industry? Or something like that. Mrs. Smythe glanced at one calmly, squirting a bit of liquid out of the end. In any case, it appears the girl's condition is a freak accident. A combination of genetics and chance 
that is not likely to re be repeated. The other girl displayed very different characteristics, after all. Now, Koitek is interested in safe, stable pro uh, projects, which we may be able to extract from this girl. If we can just figure out all the details of her case. Not hurt her, please. If she cooperates, we won't. <laughs> liar, liar. Are you going to cooperate, Lizzie? That is what I was afraid of. Let's see if this will change your mind. Mrs. Smythe jabbed the needle into Lizzie's arm. She uh, she hissed and began to break her and tried to break her rods, but they stayed firm. Now, are you feeling more cooperative? Lizzie shot her a glare of pure malice. Miss Mrs. Smythe waited for a while, then frowned. Ineffective as I'd feared. Well, this is why we brought alternatives. Hold him. Too late, John realized they were referring to him. Some of the remaining soldiers held him in place while Mrs. Smythe approached and injected him with a second syringe. Instantly his head was filled with a pitch black fog, where there came pain and lethargy, rendering him nearly comatose in his chair. He took everything he had just to focus through the fog. Stop it! You see, the fixation on the boy is part of her insanity. I told you we could use him. Is she gonna cooperate? Well, girl, will you? John wanted to tell her not to give in, but his jaw didn't seem to work. He couldn't even twitch when Mrs. Smythe came closer and injected him with something else. This one took away the pain, for the world began spinning violently around him. The black fog in his mind swirled together with the world around him. And he could feel himself being dragged down into an uncomprehending haze. Staying focused on reality was feeling difficult. Ghosts of everyone spiraling out from their bodies. Stop! You're killing him! Now, I have no intention of doing that. This will already be enough of a mess. We can't afford any more legal conflicts. But with enough of these, I can make him completely compliant. He'll say anything we want him to say, and everything that he is, will cease to be. The words sent a wave of cold horror spiraling into the whirlwind around him, but it made Lizzie give, give a sobbing cry. As everything faded away, the last thing he heard was her desperate plea. No. Please. No! Before he could hear anything else, John lost his last grip on reality. He tumbled down into a maelstrom of chemicals and emotions and chaos. It felt like he fell forever. And then, suddenly, it all stopped. It was as if he stood in the eye of a hurricane, whirling chaos all around him. But for the moment, perfectly still. In that moment, he saw a fever dream of fracturing time. In the eye of a hurricane, there is quiet. For just a moment, a yellow sky. In that moment, he knew that if he gave in, they would die. If Lizzie gave them what they wanted, they would die. Everywhere he returned, death. He knew he was probably hallucinating, but he still searched for some path that didn't end in death. Yet he found nothing. His mind grew lighter, and he could feel himself coming out of the stillness, back through the chaos. He knew that unless he used his moment of clarity to do something, he would be lost. But what? There was death on every side, and even outside his hallucination, what could he possibly do? He was weak, as he was trapped. The enemy was all around them. Then, when death stood out to him, he caught only insane flashes of things he couldn't understand. A glimpse of a willow tree, and then, death. But unlike all the other points of light dancing in his vision, he was sure were hallucinations. This one felt real. Heavy. It was death, but not death like this. He had no idea what it meant knew that this was probably all his mind breaking apart, but he still lunged for that final death. 
He came back to himself, reeling but somehow standing. His world was cloaked in dark fog, but he could see enough. Everything he had seen moments before seemed like madness to him, but abruptly he realized what he needed to do. Not even thinking about it, he lunged away from the soldiers towards the table, grabbed the bright red syringe, and plunged it into Lizzie's shoulder. What? Now that's an interesting tack. Now there's a flash. Right. They wrestled him away the next second, even then the soldiers taken aback that he had moved like that. Mrs. Smythe stared at him in shock. Are you insane? Quite possibly. Maybe... Maybe you are. Maybe part of my mistake was thinking you were normal in the first place. Huh. Yeah. Maybe that... Maybe it was. Well, I'll fix that mistake soon. That chemical was valuable. You're going to regret wasting it. But not as much as she was going to regret ignoring Lizzie. As the chemical pumped through her body, Lizzie became strangely calm. Her eyes were glassy and empty. That did not mean she was sedated. Eyes still blank, Lizzie calmly tore through her restraints and rose to her feet. <laughs> what? How is she? <laughs> Lizzie dissolved into a stream of erratic movements almost faster than the eye could follow. Lumping back into his chair, John could only watch. She smashed one soldier's head to the ground, and something gave a sickening crack. While the others were still recoiling, Lily lunged at the next and tore out his throat with her teeth. They were all panicking, trying to react to her moving even faster than before, but it was too late. Lizzie had picked up her axe. Watching her, Don couldn't help but feel that she was strangely beautiful. Her erratic movement smoothed out, becoming a deadly dance that sent sprays of blood away from her almost elegantly. Through it all, she laughed. Yet it wasn't a laugh of desperation. There was a savage joy there that he was happy to hear. A rapturous joy that I share. What had possessed him to inject her with the chemical? Thinking about it now, it seemed an act of, an act of madness. But of course it would be madness that frees us from this... From this usual... Uh, from this... From this strangely regular... But on some level... He had been certain that her body hadn't been reje hadn't rejected the drug. It had adapted, absorbed it, become stronger. And so the second dose had just multiplied the effect. <sighs> Soon all the soldiers were dead. Mrs. Smythe stared in horror, then managed to pull herself back together. That's enough. Do you realize you're seeing all this? Your little fetish is going to... You don't understand how utterly captivating I find this, do you? Her head tumbled from her shoulders. John blinked in surprise as he realized that Lizzie had literally decapitated the woman with her axe in a single blow. And then Lizzie was still, the blood slowly dripping down her body. She stood not far away from him, axe held loosely, laughter gone, just standing, watching him. He realized that though the chemical had increased her strength, it had no doubt magnified her mental instability as well. He couldn't know what she was thinking, but he could see the turmoil in her eyes. All John wanted to do was lie down and sleep. Maybe let her kill him. It didn't matter. He had pushed himself too far to care. And yet, he saw pain in her eyes, and he remembered how many times he'd felt the same way and wished that anyone would help him. Somehow, through the pain and dizziness and grayness consuming him, John stood up, 
He took several uneven steps over to Lizzie, then wrapped his arms around her and held her close. She was still for a moment, then gripped him back. So tightly it was almost painful, with her axe dangerously close, dangerously close to his head, but he didn't let go. John wasn't sure how long they stayed like that. Gradually, he seemed to come back to himself, the chemical mess he'd been injected with fading away and leaving him with nothing but his own depression. That was his, he knew with heavy certainty. There was no conspiracy there, no easy solution. It was something he would live with, but he wouldn't live with it alone. Lizzie shifted in his arms, raising her face up enough to kiss him. Some time later, they both parted. He felt heavy, but he could move. Something vicious still lurked in Lizzie's eyes, but it was the viciousness he had come to love. Are you okay, John? <laughs> You're asking me that. I'm fine. Whatever they did to me wasn't permanent. What they, what they did to you was, but that's just the way I like you. What they did to me was, I feel, I can't describe it. Do you, do you hate me? You seem what I really am now. I'll never be normal. And I don't want you to be. Ah. John, please tell me you love me. All right, you love me. <laughs> I love you, Lizzie. I always will. Yes. I love you so much. I would slaughter every single person in this world just to be with you a second longer. Well, let's hope we can get a better rate than one second for total genocide. Lizzie gave a brief laugh. She sounded almost normal for a moment, and that single moment helped both of them return to themselves a bit. A little. This is really a mess. We'll have to leave. If we stay here too long, they'll find us. Is there any hope? I think they contacted Koitech headquarters about us. No, they didn't. I destroyed the communication system first. She gave him an odd grin, a mix of nervousness and a vicious satisfaction. I wanted to come after you right away, throw myself at them until they were all dead and you were safe. But then I remembered all my time with you. I want to be with you forever, John. We have to make that happen. But how? All of this? It will hurt them too. They're already under government scrutiny, and the way they work with local police is definitely corrupt. They can't afford to push on this. But they wouldn't forgive us for this. Then we'll just have to make sure they never find out, won't we? And if they do, well, we'll just have to kill every last person they send at us until they realize that it's just not fucking worth it. And that'll be its own fun, won't it? He smiled, and he smiled back. Lizzie extended her hand, still covered in blood, and they held hands while they set about cleaning up the bodies. <laughs> ah, and that's the end. Oh, or not. John, are you still with me? Yes. Just thinking about everything that happened when we met. Ah, yes. So much emotion. But it was like living in a movie, wasn't it? I've never- I'd never seen you kill that many people before. <laughs> Does that imply that you- that you've seen her kill that many people since? <laughs> oh, you think about the time you injected me? Always such a romantic. When we first met, you said you'd found me. It wasn't only that. I found you. If I hadn't, I don't know if I would have survived. I certainly never would have discovered all this. We're surrounded by so much beauty, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, I never imagined that a singular focus could expand so much. Yes. Whatever, whatever lapis lazuli was hiding behind my colorblindness. But now... I'm glad we're alone now, John. I made the right choice with you. Our world was so gray, and now... I'm so glad I found you. Lizzie, I... 
Do I need to say it? No. I already know. You can say it one more time if you want. True ending. Choose your title screen. Living tree or burn tree? Do you even need to ask? Ah! And that was Crimson Grey. Uh, story about... well... I just... A story about a gray world being dip, being plunged into co a story about a gray gray world having an introdu uh, having a, a being introduced with a, to a splash of red murder and all and so many other beatific colors coming from that splash. A story, story of mad love, and I wouldn't have it any other way. A story about madness and death and, and bloody murder, and I wouldn't have it any other taffing way. Easily one of the best love stories I've ever had the fortune of guiding. Right up there with Slay the Princess. I'm glad that. And I'm glad that I got that ending my first time. I just did what came naturally, and I got the best ending from it. I told. I told you, John. I told you I'd guide you right. And I fulfilled that promise without even needing to, to redo my decisions in the slightest. So, yeah, I hear there's a sequel, and I probably will play that at some point, but not now. Not, not for now. I've got other things I've planned, and I just cleared up two spots in my rudimentary schedule. So, yeah. And besides, what, what more could I want from, from this game other than that beautiful Shining moment. It was everything I could have asked for. Including vindication for my... For my immediate... My immediate theories about Mrs. Smythe and Koitek. Um. And yeah, this is where we leave them. Where we leave John and Lizzie. I could replay the game and do the other endings, but to paraphrase XKCD, why would I need other endings? <laughs> so, yeah, this is where we leave them. At that one glorious beatific moment. And this is where I leave you as well, dear audience. For now, at least. I finished up two series. I've got to figure out what else to play in their pl uh, next. But without any further ado whatsoever, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video. Unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave an nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, 
and sayonara, suckers. <laughs>